Welcome to the Jewelry Resellers Podcast, your go-to source for all things shiny, sparkly, and of course, profitable. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'll be your guide on this dazzling journey through the world of reselling jewelry. We'll be diving deep into the art and science of reselling, uncovering valuable tips, insider secrets, and sharing stories from successful jewelry resellers. We'll explore market trends, industry news, and even discuss how to find those hidden gems just waiting to be discovered in thrift stores, estate sales, and beyond. So if you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a hustle, or if you're a seasoned pro looking to stay at the top of your jewelry reselling game, join me each week for insights, stories, and more on the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. All right, so today we are going to talk about the differences between antique, vintage, and estate jewelry. Now, I got a question about this not too long ago, and so I decided to do a podcast episode breaking this down because a lot of people use these terms interchangeably. Some people get confused by these terms. And then after we talk about the differences between these terms, we're going to move into talking about the value of these different types of jewelry because they are distinctly different. And so my goal with today's episode is to teach you how you can use these terms to categorize either the jewelry that you're selling, the jewelry that you're buying, or the jewelry that you are collecting. Okay, but before we get into that, I want to say hello and welcome. My name is Desiree, and I am the host of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. I am a jewelry reseller. I have been doing this going on four years now, and I absolutely love it. I am, I just get more and more passionate about this, this topic every single day, and the more I learn, the more I want to learn. So I'm really excited to share that enthusiasm with you, and I also want to help you if you are getting started on this journey. I'd like to invite you to join our weekly newsletter. And when you join the weekly newsletter, I will be sending you a list of the 20 best selling vintage jewelry brands that I believe all resellers should know. And this is going to be helpful, especially if you start to learn some of the more popular in demand brands or pieces when you're outsourcing jewelry to resell and hopefully flip for a profit. Or maybe you're just looking to build your collection, okay? So you can get that list. All you have to do is head on over to the website that is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. That's jewelryresellerspodcast.com. I will also have a link for you in the show notes or in the description if you are listening to this on YouTube. Okay, let's get into today's topic, and we're going to be talking about, like I said earlier, understanding the distinctions between antique, vintage, and estate jewelry. Now, this is really important to learn, like I said, especially if you are a collector, if you're a seller, if you're a buyer, or if you just are a jewelry enthusiast, because I know there's a lot of us who just appreciate jewelry for all of the various reasons. But... What we want to understand, first of all, is that each term describes a different category based on the age and the history of that particular jewelry piece. And this will add to the piece's value. It will add to whether or not this is a highly collectible piece. And in some cases, it will add to the appeal of certain pieces. Okay, so let's break down each one. And I'm going to start with antique jewelry. All right, so the definition of antique jewelry is jewelry that is at least 100 years old. Okay, so that is the only thing you really need to to worry about as it relates to antique jewelry is the age is at least 100 years old. Okay, and antique jewelry does have some unique characteristics as well. Antique jewelry pieces are valued for their historical significance, their craftsmanship, 
and many times for the unique materials used during the time period in which they were made. Now, a lot of these pieces will often reflect the art and cultural trends of their time, such as Art Nouveau, Victorian, and so forth. Now, one of the things you need to consider as it relates to antique jewelry is understanding because of the age of these pieces, they can be very rare, very delicate, and sometimes antique jewelry pieces may require special care or handling, and sometimes they may require restoration to preserve their condition. So these are all things we want to remember and think about as it relates to antique jewelry. Okay, so now we are going to talk about vintage jewelry. And I know a lot of us, we know what vintage jewelry is. We love it. <laughs> We're excited about it. We love to buy it. We love to look at it. We love to wear it. So as it relates to the definition of vintage jewelry, the term vintage can be a little bit more flexible, but generally it refers to jewelry that is at least 20 to maybe 25, even 30 years old, but it does not exceed 100 years old, at which point then it would be considered antique. Okay, so I know depending on who you talk to, maybe what group that you're in, because there's some groups online where they say vintage is at least 20 years old. I've heard vintage has to be at least 25 years old. So again, it just kind of depends. And like I said earlier, there is a little bit of flexibility, but I always say at a minimum 20 years. And to me, that seems to make sense. That seems to make the most sense, at least in my head. All right, let's talk about some of the characteristics of vintage jewelry. Now, very similar to antique, vintage jewelry captures the essence of the era in which it was made with distinct styles, materials, and designs. Pieces from the Art Deco period, retro Hollywood glam of the mid 20th century, and even bold styles from the 80s and 90s are considered vintage. So vintage is a very popular term now because not only are people seeking out vintage jewelry, but they want vintage everything nowadays. And sometimes you will see vintage jewelry pieces that are reproductions of other vintage jewelry pieces. So it's a fun thing to look at, to study, to buy, but you really have to understand what makes jewelry vintage. And like I said, we are talking about basically the age of particular jewelry pieces. All right, so what are some things to consider as it relates to vintage jewelry? Well, vintage jewelry's value comes from its representation of a specific area, era, <laughs> like I talked about earlier. Uh, it's also important to Pay attention to the condition of the piece and sometimes the brand or the maker or the designer. Now the market for vintage pieces can vary greatly depending on current fashion trends and what is popular with collectors and buyers. Okay, so like I said, people really are into vintage right now, and I don't see I don't see the interest slowing down. As a matter of fact, it just seems to grow more and more each day. Okay, so let's move on to estate jewelry. So what is estate jewelry? All right, so the definition of estate jewelry refers to any piece of jewelry that was previously owned regardless of its age, okay? So estate jewelry can include antique, vintage, and even modern jewelry pieces. So now I have seen and heard people calling estate jewelry 
vintage jewelry. And I guess technically that's not incorrect, but some people don't really understand that estate jewelry just means it, it's jewelry that was pre-owned. It doesn't mean that it has a particular age. It doesn't mean that it has a particular style or that it costs a certain amount. Estate jewelry is any jewelry that was pre-owned. In other words, any jewelry that you're buying that is not new, that was owned by someone else before you, is technically considered estate jewelry. All right, so what are the characteristics of estate jewelry? Well, basically, like I said, it's, it's all about its pre-owned status. Now, these pieces can come from a variety of eras and styles, including highly valuable antiques and sought-after vintage items. Estate collections oftentimes come to market when an individual's assets are liquidated, whether it's through a sale, an auction, or an inheritance. So what are some considerations as it relates to estate jewelry? Well, the condition and value of estate jewelry can vary widely. Provenance, which is the piece's history and previous ownership, can significantly influence its appeal and worth. And I know a lot of us have seen this when maybe celebrities or maybe uh, people who are very well known, when they sell their jewelry, or maybe it, it, it somehow finds its way into auction somewhere, sometimes what makes a piece valuable is the fact that it was owned by someone else, like someone important, someone of significance, or a celebrity, or something like that. Okay? So now we've broken down the three types of jewelry, and these labels or I guess categories are pretty much defined by a piece's age. So we talked about antique jewelry, we talked about vintage jewelry, and then we talked about estate jewelry and what the differences are between those three. So what are some takeaways we can, we can remember as it relates to this? Number one, we have to understand that age matters. The primary difference between these categories lies in the age of the jewelry. Remember, antique is at least 100 years old. Vintage jewelry is generally between 20 to 30 years old, but less than 100. And estate jewelry is pre-owned jewelry with no specific age requirement. The other thing we want to remember is the style and era, both antique and vintage jewelry are valued for their reflection of the style and craftsmanship of the period in which they were made. Estate jewelry's value can stem from various factors, including its condition, previous ownership, and historical significance. The third thing we want to remember is market value. The market value for each category can vary based on current trends, collector demand, and the rarity of the piece. Antique and well-preserved vintage pieces typically command higher prices, but unique or historically significant estate pieces can also be highly valuable. All right, so that is my breakdown of antique, vintage, and estate jewelry. And understanding these distinctions will help buyers, sellers, and collectors make informed decisions and appreciate the unique story and value of, of each of these types of jewelry pieces. Okay, so now that we understand the differences between that, let's move into a different kind of uh, conversation, I guess. And let's talk about what makes jewelry valuable. All right, now we all know value is a very subjective, broad thing as it relates to jewelry because sometimes what makes a piece valuable may not necessarily be the monetary value or the materials in which it was made of, but sometimes a lot of things have sentimental value as well. So the value of jewelry, whether it's antique, estate, or vintage, 
can vary widely based on many factors, you know, and this can make it challenging to say definitively which category is more valuable overall. Because I know some people think that antique jewelry, all antique jewelry is the most valuable types of jewelry. And then you'll talk to other people who will say, no, it's, it's, it's the luxury high end, you know, pure gold and diamonds and that type of stuff is the most valuable. And there's no saying that either, either one is right or wrong. It's just how you're looking at it or what you believe to be true as it relates to what you think or what your opinion is. All right. So instead the value of a piece within these categories depends on, on a combination of its age, rarity, condition, craftsmanship, provenance, and the demand in the current market today. Okay. And so those are all the things that we mentioned earlier. So let's talk about how each of these factors contributes to the value in the context as it relates to antique, vintage, and estate jewelry. All right, now I'm gonna start with antique jewelry because I think a lot of us can agree, yes, antique jewelry is very valuable. Yes, a lot of us would love to probably collect, maybe if we could, only antique jewelry pieces just because it's fun and for me, I just, I really appreciate the beauty and the uniqueness of it. So let's start by considering the age and the rarity we talked about this earlier. Like, like we said, antique jewelry is at least 100 years old. And what makes it valuable is sometimes the historical era that it represents. And I talked about this earlier too. Pieces from periods like the Victorian, Edwardian, or Art Nouveau eras are highly sought after by collectors. We also talked about the craftsmanship, the unique craftsmanship and often handmade nature of antique jewelry also contribute to its value and the condition. Now I come from <laughs> the school of thought that condition is everything as it relates to antique, pretty much anything. Yes, things can be restored. Yes, things can be repaired, but the more, I don't want to say pristine, but the more, you know, preserved the original condition is, tends to make that piece high, much, much more higher in value. And then, you, you know, like I'm saying, this is just my opinion, you know, maybe not everybody agrees. But from, from what I've learned and from the many conversations I've had with people who are experts as it relates to this kind of thing, uh, many of us tend to agree that condition really is everything. So because that really shows the well-preserved beauty of the piece, or in some cases, the rarity of, of the piece. Okay, so even though something is old, quote unquote, as it relates to antique jewelry, if it doesn't have significant damage or repairs or uh, alterations that have been made, those types of pieces are much more valuable, okay? Just because, you know, people like their stuff in pristine condition. And, and I'm, I'm that way myself. I'm very picky <laughs> when it comes to my jewelry. I'm very picky with, with the pieces that I source, you know, for clients or for selling. I want my stuff to look as new as it possibly can. Okay. And I understand sometimes as it relates to antique or vintage jewelry, that may not necessarily be an easy thing, but it is out there. It is out there. I've seen it many times. All right. So now let's talk about the value of vintage jewelry and what makes vintage jewelry valuable. All right. So remember vintage jewelry is between 20 to 30 years old and it captures the essence of the fashion trends and the cultural moments of its time. Like we said before, Art Deco, Retro Hollywood, you know, and that is what can make vintage jewelry highly desirable. Because sometimes there's certain things as it relates to pop culture that gets reflected in fashion and jewelry as well. And so those time periods and those um, trends and things, you know, people just like to remember them. 
and jewelry is a reflection of that for sure. Another thing that can make vintage jewelry valuable is the brand and or the designer certain vintage pieces, especially those from renowned brands or designers can fetch really high prices. Okay, so sometimes jewelry will be popular or in demand just because of the person who made it or maybe sometimes just because of somebody who wore it. You know, we still see that today. Uh, I was just talking on another podcast where all the girls were trying to buy uh, some of the similar jewelry that Taylor Swift is currently wearing right now, you know, because she's making certain types of jewelry or styles of jewelry very popular amongst the young girls. So as it relates to vintage jewelry, again, it is the age, but it's also what the jewelry represents, what the style or what the um, trends were as it relates to that type of jewelry at that time. All right, we also don't want to forget the materials used and the styles of vintage jewelry, like I said, especially those that are back in fashion today or things that remain timeless. That will also influence its value. And I'm sure a lot of us are thinking, you know, pieces like Tiffany or from Chanel and, you know, those things are like they're just classy no matter what time period you're talking about. And those types of pieces are always in demand and they're always highly valuable. All right, so let's talk about what makes estate jewelry valuable. Now, I mentioned this before, the provenance. In other words, who owned the jewelry before? You know, was it owned by a celebrity? Was it owned by someone who was famous for some other reason? Was it owned by uh, uh, a historical figure, maybe? You know, estate jewelry, which is pre-owned jewelry, and it can be from any era, like we mentioned earlier, you know, it may have added value if it has a notable provenance or history of ownership, right? So... A lot of times with estate jewelry, remember the key is that it's pre-owned, but then again, who was the previous owner? <laughs> that can determine exactly what the jewelry is worth. Even though, let's say the jewelry itself may not be worth much, if it was owned by any celebrity, well, yeah, it's going to be worth something, especially to people who are collectors and fans and that type of thing. All right, another thing that makes estate jewelry valuable is the condition and the quality. Now, the overall condition, quality, and intrinsic value of the materials, such as gems and maybe metals, play a significant role in its valuation. So, like I said, it's not only the jewelry itself, but it's also who owned it. And now we're talking about the quality of the jewelry that it was owned. And sometimes, you know, I've seen pieces that are not necessarily, you know, the most... Uh, high quality jewelry pieces, but because people like them, the the one I'm thinking about right now is uh, Betsy Johnson. Now I've sold a lot of Betsy Johnson pieces, and people just love them. And I and I know this isn't necessarily estate jewelry per se, but I have gone to estate sales and I've bought jewelry and I've bought a, a lot of Betsy Johnson pieces, and they're not you know the most high end pieces of jewelry. But because they're Betsy Johnson pieces, people love them. You know, she definitely has a, a unique style to her jewelry. And not that I'm buying pieces, you know, Betsy Johnson pieces, pieces of jewelry because they were owned by her. But I'm just saying that kind of gives an example in, in, in the sense that it doesn't have to be super high quality jewelry to be in demand as it relates to estate jewelry, which is what we're talking about now. All right, so we also want to think about the market demand as it relates to estate jewelry and its value. Pieces that are currently in high demand, regardless of their age, can be much more valuable. All right, so when we are trying to assess whether or not a particular type or style or piece of jewelry is valuable or not, we have to take these things into consideration. And of course, you will learn this over time. This is not something that you're just going to know, you know, as soon as you start, start doing this. But the more you learn about the different types of jewelry, like we're saying here, antique, 
vintage and estate. And then you will start to develop knowledge to learn what is most valuable to your buyers, to your customers, and to your clients. Or if you are a collector, you will be able to, you know, break down what is valuable for you and what you prefer and what you're looking for and what you want. So I hope that, you know, this really was helpful in in teaching you how to be more discerning when, when you assess not only the age of a jewelry piece, but also the value of a jewelry piece. All right, so let's continue on here. Now, the most valuable category of jewelry can totally differ, you know, based on current market trends, collector interests, and specific characteristics of individual pieces. And like I said earlier, antique jewelry often hold, holds a high value due to its age and its rarity and historical significance. You know, when it comes to antique jewelry, it's not like you can just go to the mall and, and buy that. You know, those are pieces that are just not made anymore. And, um, you know, there a lot of times they're one of a kind or they have been in families, you know, for generations and um, they're just so, so unique right? So we have to really take all of these things, like I said, into consideration when we assess the jewelry that we are buying. Now, certain vintage pieces, especially from coveted designers or periods, can rival or exceed the value of some antique jewelry. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Not all antique jewelry is going to be highly, highly valuable or high dollar even. All right, we also want to think about estate jewelry's value and how sometimes it's dependent on its condition, quality, its history. And remember, estate jewelry can include valuable pieces from both antique and vintage jewelry categories. So what do you do if you don't know exactly how to assess the value of a particular jewelry piece. Well, there's probably several ways you can go about it. Of course, you can always work with an appraiser and get the piece appraised. You know, if it's something that you own and you're trying to figure out how much it's worth or what the value is because you want to sell it. And if you're looking to buy a piece, Uh, You'll probably have to do some research, probably online, maybe taking a couple photos of the piece or looking at photos if they're posted online. Because sometimes we're going to have to do this without knowing a whole lot of backstory about the pieces, you know, because we've all seen listings online where it says estate jewelry, vintage jewelry, and we don't know if they, if they actually are, um, vintage or antique jewelry pieces, you know, because I've seen that, I've seen those terms, like I said, mixed interchangeably uh, many times online, especially, you know, because a lot of people just don't know the difference. So you're really going to have to do your own due diligence and just be knowledgeable. And I think I, I feel like sometimes I say that (laughs) a lot is that uh, everything really breaks down to being knowledgeable and being educated as it relates to the type of jewelry that you want to sell. You know, um, it's, it's going to help you the more, you know, because then you're going to know exactly what you're looking for and whether or not you're getting a good deal for the price of what it is, you know, or what they're asking or, or, or what you're trying to sell it for. Okay. So, uh, that's kind of the, the point here too, with today's episode is that I really want to, I want to give you this information so when you're out there finding the jewelry or or sourcing jewelry or buying jewelry or whatever, that you will have knowledge of what it is, you know, what either someone is trying to sell or what it is that you're looking to buy. All right. So ultimately assessing the value of jewelry, whether antique, vintage or estate, a lot of times it may require an appraisal. You know, and, and, and an appraiser 
can consider all of the factors from the material and the craftsmanship, the history, the current demands, and will give you a very holistic, uh, I guess, approach as it relates to a piece's value, you know, and an accurate assessment of a jewelry piece's value. But again, you know, this. I don't think a lot of us are going to have tons of pieces that we need to hire an appraiser for, you know, and I would only do that for something that I believe, you know, after all these factors considered, I would only do that, you know, spend the money and invest in that if it was a piece that I truly believed was, was rare and a piece that I truly believed was worth a significant amount of money. So I really hope that this helped clarify some things for you. I really, really believe that this is something, like I said, that we all need to be aware of, be knowledgeable about, so we don't confuse ourselves when we're out there looking for stuff, you know, and and so other people don't unintentionally (laughs) confuse us because that will happen too. You know, that will happen too. People will tell you, oh yes, this is, this is an antique jewelry collection, you know, that my mother had, you know, and, and it may not be, it may be estate jewelry, but it may not necessarily be antique jewelry. But you know, I, I don't believe people are trying to be misleading. I just think a lot of people are, are maybe uninformed or they just, you know, they just don't know any better, (laughs) you know, they just don't know. But like I said, hopefully after listening to this episode, you will not be one of those people who is totally confused or uninformed as it relates to antique, vintage, and estate jewelry and its value. And with that, I am going to wrap up this episode. So like I said, I hope it was helpful. I hope you found value. If you do have any questions or topic ideas for future episodes, I would love to hear them. You can contact me by visiting the website. Again, that is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. You can also leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts because I always love reading your feedback and taking into consideration, you know, what you, what you think in your own opinions. So please leave me a comment. I'd love to read them. And uh, with that, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. I'll check in with you again really soon.